on behalf of the Nehru Center and the South Asian Cinema Foundation, I welcome all of you here today to the launch of our new book, A Biographical Dictionary of Indo-British Cinema, and to our new film, East Meets West, at the Nehru Center. The SSCF has had a long and strong relationship with the Nehru Center ever since it was established in the year 2000 by film archivist P.K. Nair, British film critic Derek Malcolm, and Lalit Mohan Joshi. I can recall that the director of the Nehru Center then was playwright, filmmaker, and actor Girish Karnad, whom many of us know. That day we also had in our midst well-known actor of Indian and British theatre and cinema, Saeed Jafri, the late filmmaker Dev Mohan Mundra, as well as Pamela Cullen, London's dedicated promoter of Satyajit Ray's cinema in the UK. Today, I am specially honoured and delighted to welcome two outstanding scholars of international repute, Professor Jeffrey Richards, Emeritus Professor of Cultural History, Lancaster University, and Dr. Charles Dresden, Senior Lecturer in Film Studies, Queen Mary University of London. Jeffrey Richards is a prolific writer who has generously helped us in our film heritage project. He advised us in producing our new publication, wrote its forward, and also contributed to the new film that we will be screening today. And what can I say of Charles Dresden? He is an erudite film scholar, and his book on British movie mogul Alexander Korda really reads like a novel. Despite a very busy schedule, he has contributed to our film, and as you will see for yourself today, he has made quite a big contribution. We owe him special thanks, because though we found him through his scholarly work on Korda, it was he who led us to a treasure house of knowledge and a real guru, Professor Jeffrey Richards. So a big thank you to both Jeffrey Richards and Charles Hill. The way we have planned today's program is first to have our book launch, then we will screen our film, followed by a short question and answer session. But before the launch of, of our book, I would like to invite Professor Jeffrey Richards. It's a great pleasure and privilege to have been involved in this project because it's opened up an entirely new area and, and the hidden heritage is, is a good description of it. Um, I uh, was involved both in, in uh, giving a, a lecture screening and um, contributing the entry on Sabu to the Biographical Dictionary um, and uh, being interviewed for the film. Uh, all the outcomes have been very carefully calibrated, so um, from the project there have been exhibitions, lectures, screenings, and the book and the film. Um, various hidden aspects that have been uncovered include the, uh, the birth of a number of British stars in India, not of Indian heritage, but um, with their parents working in British India, as it then was. Uh, Vivian Lee, who was born in Darjeeling, and Margaret Lockwood, who was born in Karachi. Um, the two greatest stars to have emerged from this project um, are fascinating contrasts. And Merle Oberon became a star by concealing the fact of her Indian birth. Sabu became a star by proclaiming it and utilizing it. Uh, and that's one of the paradoxes of this whole um, interesting area. Um, the um, most recent discovery that we've made, um, which is hot off the press, in fact, is that one of Hollywood's greatest stars of horror films, Boris Karloff, actually had a part Indian origin. He was from a long-standing family of British Indian civil servants. And the recent biography of him, which is... Uh, traced his genealogical background, has demonstrated that one of his forebears married an Indian lady, and he therefore was in part, in background, Indian, something he never ever talked about or admitted during the course of his lifetime has now become clear. When people remarked on the darkness of his skin, he put it down to his addiction to sunbathing in California when he was a Hollywood <laughs> star. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased to have been in the film. I've seen the film already. I think it's an excellent piece of work, very well balanced, it, it, it's, a, it's a combination of interviews and footage and I think makes out a fascinating case to justify this, this whole uh, fascinating project. So I, I wish it well and I wish both the uh, film and the, and the, the documentary great success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Charles, would you like to say something about briefly if you want? <laughs> well, I'm not sure there's very much I can add to what Jeffrey has already said, except um, this, this project, um, as far as my involvement, as people say, goes back um, some time. Um, I think I um, was um, first brought into this, so it was just a germ of an idea. It's just wonderful to see it happen. Um, having re reached fruition um, through such patent enthusiasm, I think, on the behalf of um, both Cruz and Lamit. So, um, like Jeff, I can only wish it well. I haven't seen the documentary yet, so I'll wait in bated um, breath to see um, how that turns out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeffrey. And, uh, uh, and thank you, Charles Rezin. Uh, before I introduce my film, uh, let me tell you that this is, this is a dummy, this is not a real book, this is a full book. Everything is there, but we have, the real book is much more attractive than this one. So please book your copy. So as far as the film is concerned, uh, this project, as, as I said, was about one and a quarter year. So much water has flown under the Thames and I have uh, made friends with Charles and Jeffrey and all that chat and then you know did research with Kusum. So it was when when I started making the film I really thought that I made a mistake by committing to Heritage Lottery that I'll make a film on that. Because the project was not only about Sabu, Marla Brown, it was all of, also about so many people which we didn't know much about and we were researching. Like for example, you know, Divan Shalan, who was, who, who was a huge personality in the 30s, 40s in this country and who, uh, whose contribution is not known today, not in India, not here, nowhere. So it was very fascinating. But my job in the film was to what, what should I do with the film? How do I make the film? There are about seven, eight, nine people, nine stories of different uh, kinds. So it was, I thought the best way to make this film is to tell these stories, different stories, and, and maybe then I will succeed. So that is what I have tried. I don't know have I succeeded or not. So you see the film with some compassion, and if it is good, tell me. If it is bad, tell me. Thank you. I wanted to mention that uh, the some of the people who've made this film with me are here, and one of them is the music composer Neelesh. Neelesh, can you please stand up and please uh, give him a hand? <laughs> Neelesh, he has done the screen photography and he is the music uh, director, and this is his first film. So if he becomes big, he will remember me. <laughs> Happy viewing.